Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to learn two techniques for solving systems of linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients when the matrix has complex eigenpairs. Now the two techniques are essentially going to be one where we work through the process to develop our two solutions and then the second technique is basically just using a pre-built formula to generate our solutions. We'll start by looking at the process approach. Consider this system where the vector u prime is equal to this matrix times the vector u. That's our system of differential equations written in matrix form. Now the first step in solving the system would be to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now here we present one eigenpair that we've pre-calculated where lambda is equal to negative 2 plus 4i and the associated eigenvector is negative 1 plus i in the first component and 2 in the second component. Now, we know that the second eigenpair would simply be the conjugate of the first eigenpair, but to write out our solutions to the system, we actually only need the first eigenpair. So we will choose to use the positive eigenpair. Now our first step when we approach a system of differential equations with constant coefficients is to assume that our solution has the form some vector e to the lambda t. That's our assumption that once we make that assumption, we then can derive the fact that the missing parameters are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Well, now that we've calculated those, we're actually just going to write those into our solution form. If we just apply these values here, I'm going to write the exponential value first. Well, e to the, my eigenvalue is negative 2 plus 4i t, and the associated eigenvector is negative 1 plus i and 2. So in theory, this would be our solution, but we're really trying to manipulate this so that we can get real solutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the exponential value and distribute the t and use some exponent properties to write it as e to the negative 2t times e to the i times 4t, still times our eigenvector. Now from here, we're going to use Euler's identity on this term. Remember, Euler's identity says that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. So when we apply that to e to the i 4t, we're treating theta to be 4t, we will get the quantity cosine of 4t plus i sine of 4t. Once again, still times our eigenvector. Now we're simply going to treat this expression here as a scalar and actually multiply it by our eigenvector. So when I multiply it by the first component, I'll have to use the distributive property. So I'll take cosine of 4t times negative 1 to get negative cosine of 4t, and multiply that by i to get i cosine of 4t, and then I'll take i sine of t times negative 1 to get minus i sine of 4t. And then lastly, I'll take a i sine of t times the i. i times i, i squared is negative 1. So I'll get minus sine of 4t. That's what I have as the first component of this vector. The second component is a little bit easier. I simply multiply it by 2. I'll get 2 cosine of 4t plus i times 2 sine of 4t. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vector, I'm going to break it into the sum of two vectors. I'm going to organize it by the real stuff and the imaginary stuff. And then I'm going to distribute my e to the negative 2t across that vector. So when everything is said and done, I'll have rewritten this expression into this form. So to do that, I'll have e to the negative 2t times the real components here. So I'm just going to underline those. I have negative cosine of 4t. And then this last value is a real value term, so minus sine of 4t. And then in the second component, the only real term is 2 cosine of 4t. So that is my first vector here plus i times e to the negative 2t times the imaginary component. So I have one here, these two, and I'll have this one. 
So I've already factored out my i, so now I can just write this as cosine of 4t minus sine of 4t. And the second component, I have 2 sine of 4t. All right, so now I have this. And really now I can just take the real part as my first solution to the system. I can take the imaginary part. Notice I'm not going to take the i, though. And that's going to be the second solution. So in this way, I could, I could kind of go through the steps here if I wanted by adding and subtracting and manipulating these specific values to eliminate the i and do that. But really, I can just take the real part, take the imaginary part. Those are going to be my two solutions. And then to form my general solution to the system, well, that's just going to be c1 times u1 plus c2 times u2. And so since I've already done the legwork of writing this guy out, I'm just going to manipulate this to show my final solution. So in this case, my final solution would be c1 times that first expression. I won't have the i anymore, but rather c2 times that second expression. And that would be the solution, the general solution, to that system of differential equations. So that's the process approach. Now let's take a look at the formula approach to writing out our solution. So for the formula approach, we essentially use parameters and go through that solution process to establish these two formulas. So given some system, in general with complex eigenvalues alpha plus beta i, and complex eigenvector, where I can break it into a real part x plus i times the imaginary part of the vector y, then I can generate these two solution formulas. So to see these formulas in action, we'll go back and use the same example we've already worked with. We'll look at this system, where my eigenvalue was negative 2 plus 4i, and the associated eigenvector was negative 1 plus i and 2 in the second component. So if these are my eigenvalue and eigenvector that I'm working with here, I'm going to say that alpha is then negative 2, and my beta value will be 4. And then I'm going to take my eigenvector and I'm going to separate it into the real parts, negative 1 and 2, plus i times the imaginary parts, which would be 1 and 0 in this case. And so in this example, my x vector, the, the real part of the eigenvector, is going to be negative 1, 2, and my y vector, the imaginary parts, will be 1, 0. And now I can exceptionally plug these into my formulas. So u1, that solution, will be e to the negative 2t times cosine of 4t, as I've used my alpha and beta, times the eigenvector, negative 1, 2, the real part of that eigenvector, minus sine of 4t times the imaginary part of the eigenvector, 1, 0. Writing u2, the formula follows pretty closely, e to the negative 2t. The difference is I switch my trig functions, doing sine first, and then I change the sine in between the trig's functions. And so I've written out my second solution. And that's really it. We're really just plugging these values in. Now if I want, I can certainly leave my solutions like this. However, I could also combine the vectors. I could multiply this vector by cosine of 4t, multiply this vector by negative sine of 4t, combine them into one vector. If I chose to do that, I would have e to the negative 2t times the vector. That would be negative cosine of 4t minus sine of 4t, and then just a 2 cosine of 4t in the second component. My second solution would be e to the negative 2t. In this case, I would have negative sine of 4t plus cosine of 4t, and the second component would just be 2 sine of 4t. And the only reason we're going to write these in this uh, different form is that we can really compare these solutions to our previous solutions where we worked through the full process and see that they are the same. So either of these forms would be fine, though. When we use our formula, it's just about identifying the components and having the formula memorized. All right, so in this video, we've gone through the general process and also used the formula approach to solve these systems where the eigenpairs are complex. All right, thank you very much.